All right, let's begin. Sitting comfortably, spine straight, shoulders relaxed. Just become aware of your breathing. Notice the expansion and contraction of your belly as you breathe. As you breathe in, the belly expands, chest expands, collarbones lift up. And as you breathe out, the collarbones go down, chest contracts, belly draws in. Smooth and slow breath in through the nose. And exhale completely. If you haven't already, gently close the eyes and notice how you feel before the practice today. Noticing any specific sensations in the physical body. And any fluctuations in the mind. Slow and deep if you're just joining. Eyes closed, spine straight. Deep, slow breaths in and out of the nose. I have another device here. Hello, Charu. Good evening. Today is a special day. We have Shivratri, celebration of the Adi Yogi, the first person who brought yoga to the world. And also Women's Day, the power of Shakti. In today's class, we are going to explore the various aspects of masculinity and femininity, bringing them together, finding balance. Let's start the class by chanting Om together. Join your palms in front of your chest and take a deep breath in. Oh. Your palms, place the warmth against your eyelids. And with a few blinks, slowly open the eyes. So most of you probably know that Shiva is known as Ardhanarishwara. So he has that equal balance between the masculine and feminine aspects. So today in this class, I would like to explore that. And the first way we are going to explore it is through our nostrils. Okay, The left nostril is associated with the feminine energy, the Ida and the right nostril with pingala, the masculine energy. So let's just check and see how the nostrils are today. You can use your thumb, press it against the place where your flesh meets the bone, okay? So right here where the flesh meets the bone, not at the end, okay? And then breathe in and out of your left, left nostril. Notice if it's blocked, open, how does that nostril feel for you? Good. And then lock your left nostril using your ring finger and breathe in and out of your right nostril. Good. Now... See which one is a little blocked compared to the other one. So if your right nostril was blocked, I would like you to lean towards your left side. Either you can just drop your ear towards the shoulder or better still, you're going to lie down on your left side 
and press your left armpit with your right hand. So if your right nostril is blocked, you lean to the left side and press your left armpit, okay, the opposite side. And vice versa. Now, if both nostrils are almost equally open, you're going to place your fingers under your armpits and just give a little massage to the armpits. Okay, our armpits are the region where, according to yoga, we have the nadis flowing, the energy channels. And according to Western science, the lymphatic system, which is like a drainage of our body, that flows through all of the joints. So by pressing and releasing the armpits, we can improve the flow of the drainage, which means that everything else flows better. It is a very central aspect of our immunity. Good. And if you're lying down on your side, slowly come up to a seated position now and just recheck. See if there is any change in how the nostrils are, how open they are. Okay, and we are going to do one more thing, which is stimulating the collarbone region and behind the ear. Okay, again, this will help us to open up the uh, nostrils even further. So you're going to find your collarbones, go below the collarbones and draw mini circles just under the collarbones all the way across and back to the middle. Just a few times. Good, and then you lift your shoulders up slightly and you'll feel that there is a hollowing under the collarbones on the top. So press your fingers in and out. And this is a very important lymphatic drainage channel. So imagine that, you know, our body also has its own sewage system. So we are trying to help open it up so that the flow of uh, blood through the circulatory system and this um, other channel, which is actually a part of the blood itself um, that gets cleared up. It's easier to flow. Now place your fingers behind your ears. The, you can feel your jaw and then you can feel the skull. In between that, there is a small gap. I want you to draw circles there. I have another device here just to see everybody more clearly. Yeah. Good. And release. Now see, if you had a blocked nostril, all of these would have helped to an extent and you may be able to feel that difference in the spine, in the nostrils. We'll move on now to our side bending. Generally, we start with the toes in most of our yoga practices, but I really like to do side bending, especially in an evening class. So slide one hand out to the side, other arm up as you breathe in. Breathe out, lean towards the side. Then the opposite side. Now one trick here is to bend so that you more isn't always better, but if you need it today, bend the lower elbow towards the floor. Doesn't have to touch. As you go from side to side, remember that these muscles around the waist, the right side and the left side, they form a pair, the pair of obliques. One has to contract and the other has to stretch. So having too much of strength and not flexibility will not provide that range of movement. You may be really strong but not flexible or you may be really flexible but not strong. So we need that balance in our uh, muscles so there you have that masculine aspect and the feminine aspect. On the down, we're going to hold the position. Stay there. From the hip to the fingertips, try to find that stretch. Feel the sensations. Four. Three. Two. One more. Very good. Release and switch to the other side. Exhale and reach to your left side. If you've already done left, do the right side. And try to keep that hip grounded as you reach from your fingertips. Charlie, you can try to straighten your elbow a little more. Top elbow, top elbow, you can straighten it out. Yeah. One more here.
Good. On your next inhale, you'll come all the way back up and release. Good. Now we'll start from the toes. If you have any knee issues, you may need to put a pillow under the knees. Okay. This is optional. You may not need it if your mat is thick enough. Come into a tabletop position. Wrists under the shoulders and knees under the hips. We'll start by tucking the toes. The heels are lifted. You're going to shift your hips back and feel the stretch in the soles of the feet. And then you shift forward as you breathe in. Untuck the toes, flatten the feet and shift back. This time we're stretching the front of the ankles. Good. Inhale, shift forward, tuck your toes. Shift your hips back, feel that stretch. Inhale forward, untuck the toes, exhale and shift back. Now, some of you may be really comfortable with this, in which case you tuck your toes, shift the hips back and lift the torso up, giving a deeper stretch. If that didn't work for you, stay with the first set. Untuck the toes, shift the hips back, maybe lift the torso up. Okay, this is optional. Inhale forward, exhale, tuck your toes, shift your hips back, maybe lifting the torso. Inhale forward, untuck the toes, shift the hips back. For most of us, when the toes are tucked, it's going to be a little challenging because we're not used to stretching the soles of the feet. But the tops of the feet, maybe it's a little bit easier. So just see how that feels for you. Two more sets like this. The soles of our feet, the hands and our face, we have a lot of nerve endings. So when we start by some activity in the feet or in the hands, our nervous system relaxes. Good, last one. Even if it feels a little bit intense, we use our breath to flow through. Okay, this time when you shift forward, I want you to tuck your toes and lift your hips up and back. Adjust the length of your downward dog. You can walk your feet all the way back or you can shorten the stance. Now, bend your right knee, straighten your left leg. And then bend your left knee, straighten your right leg. Go back and forth, stretching the back of the leg alternately. Exhale, reach the heel down. Inhale, lift that heel. Exhale, drop the heel down. Observe from the hip to the heel, what are the sensations? Good. Come to stillness and drop your knees down again. Okay. If your wrists are tired, you can come onto your fist. All right, this is an option. Just make fists with your hands. And as you breathe in, I want you to drop your belly, point your tailbone up, chest up, look up, making a U shape with your spine. And as you breathe out, tuck that tailbone under, round your back, push the floor away, look towards the belly or the navel. Breathing in, drop the belly, make a U shape with the spine, look up. Breathing out, round your back, push the floor away. You can look at your knees if your neck is not comfortable to look at the belly. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Coordinate your breath with your movement, stretching the belly and chest as you breathe in. And stretching the entire back as you breathe out. Push the floor away. In. So Charu, you can round your back more than what you have right now. So just take a look. Right now when you're exhaling, your head is moving down, but your back is almost flat. I want you to try and lift your upper back towards the ceiling. Separate your shoulder blades. So it should feel like you know the shoulder blades are moving away from your spine when you breathe out. And when you breathe in, they're coming towards each other. Breathing out, pushing away. One more round like this. Exhale, round your back. Push the floor away. Separate your shoulder blades. Keep your elbows straight. Keep your elbows straight. Elbows straight. 
Okay, can you try that with your elbows straight? Breathing in, elbows straight, look up. And then breathing out, elbows fully straight, push the floor away and round your back. Yes, that's it. Very good. Come back to a neutral position. Walk your legs back and lower all the way down to the floor. Come all the way down to the ground. So the imagery of Shiva that we see has a serpent coiled around his neck. So today we'll explore some of those postures. Hands are directly under the shoulders, elbows drawing in towards your ribs. As you breathe in, lift only the head and chest up. Belly button is still on the floor. Elbows are up in the air. Elbows up in the air. And breathing out, come down. Just preparing for the back. Lift the chest up. Elbows are in the air. Belly button on the floor. Exhale, come down. One more time. Breathing in. Push your hips down into the floor this time. Feel those buttocks engaging. Press the legs down. Seven. If you're finding it difficult to breathe, try to shift the breath into your chest and into your upper back. Our torso is really big. We don't need only the belly to breathe. Four more. See if you can lift a little higher without straining the neck. Three. If it's too much, come down and lift up again. Two, building endurance in the body and resilience in your mind. Last one. As you exhale, slowly come all the way down to the floor. You're going to stack your hands, rest your forehead on the hands, and separate your feet about matched with the part, releasing any lower back tension. Soften around the neck the shoulders. One more. The next pose that we have is a combination between Bhujangasana and Balasana. So as you inhale, you're going to lift up into Bhujangasana. And as you exhale, you're going to shift back into child's pose, Balasana. Inhale, shift forward, carefully lower the hips down, belly down, draw your elbows in. Breathing out, press the floor away, push your hips back towards your heels. A lot of times I find that um, there is some confusion between stretching and strengthening. When back bends, many people feel that they are uh, stretching the back. Actually, stretch back is child's pose, it's lengthening there. Come down to the floor and you lift your chest up. The back is strengthening. It is shortening. Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind as you explore the sensation. What does the stretching feeling in your back feel like when you're, when you're in child's pose? And then when you shift forward and lower down, lifting the chest up, what does that contraction feel like? What does strengthening feel like in your back? Two more sets like this. Exhale, hips back to the heels. Inhale, shift forward, carefully lower all the way down with control. Last one. We are actually building a lot of strength in that transition. Shiva is associated with transformation. So in our postures, we transform from one shape to the other shape. We're trying to find that aspect. When you go into child's pose the next time, stay there. Or if your forehead doesn't reach the ground, stack your fist and make a pillow for your head. Notice if you're hiking the shoulders, soften them. Two more. Keep the hips all, all the way back. Very good. Nice, Usha. Last one here. Yeah. Slowly come all the way up. Okay. From tabletop, make your way up to standing now. 
step one foot forward, then the other, and rise up. Okay. Now we are going to do a twisting movement, Tiryak uh, Tadasana. The feet are apart. Okay. And if you have knee issues, you may feel like lifting one heel up. Absolutely okay. But if you don't have any knee issues, keep the feet firmly planted on the ground. Take your left hand, place it on your right shoulder. Right arm wraps around you from behind. Press into your shoulder. Twist your body. Come back to center and change position. I'll tell you about the breath in a bit. Right hand to the left shoulder. You're going to press with your hand. Turn the body. Inhale. Come back to center. Exhale. Twist. Rotate your torso. Inhale. Return. Exhale. Twist the other way. Inhale. Return. Very good. Now on the next round when you're doing it, I would like you to look at your opposite heel. So if you're turning towards the right side, try to look at your left heel. So you're looking down a little bit. Breathing in, come back to center. Breathing out, rotate and look down. So it's a slightly different action in your spine. Keep moving with your breath. Inhale to center, exhale, twist. Make it a meditative flow. Moving from side to side, synchronizing. Good. Two more rounds remaining. Turn to one side. Inhale to center. And exhale, turn to the other side. Last round remaining. Most of our postures, we do pure twists. But some of them, we have these additions included. Good. Once you're done with both sides, come back to center. So these kind of postures, where there is a combination of movements, help us in our daily life. Suppose we have to reach back and pick up something. If you're sitting in a chair, if you're reaching back and finding something. So this uh, sort of uh, action in Tiriya Tadasana helps prepare the body for that. So we can reduce the incidence of catches. We can't get rid of it entirely, but we can kind of prepare it. Okay, same theme, but we are going to try and be the Damru of uh, Lord Jiva, okay? So you're just going to wrap your hands around as you move. So be free this time. The last round, we were very measured in our movements. Here, there's complete freedom. Let the arms go as they want to be. Four, three, two, one. Come back to center. Notice how you feel. Take a couple of easy breaths. Notice the change in your heart rate after the dynamic movement. And slowly open the eyes. We'll come to the front of the mat. Feet are about hip width apart. And you're going to step your left leg back behind you. Keep the left leg in that same line. You had your feet hip width apart. So when you step that leg back, it has to be in that same line. So the back toes are pointing to the left corner of your mat. Okay, then you're going to bend your front knee to stack on top of the ankle and reach your arms up. This is a conservative stance. Okay, Once you find this position, see if there is more room for you. Maybe you can walk that front foot forward more and bend the front knee a little further. This will ob obviously put more um, pressure on the legs. If you're feeling knee pain, reduce the intensity, back off. If you're comfortable, you can lower the hips another inch or two. Try to find that balance between effort and ease. Good. Now, from your hips to your feet, you're still in the same pose. Try to find a grounding action. Root your feet down, bringing the quality of a warrior into your posture. Rooted, strong, standing your ground. Eye gaze can be forward or upward. It doesn't matter. And once you've found that steadiness, that grounding sensation in your lower body, switch your awareness to the upper body. From your hips to your fingertips, try to find lightness and ease. 
find that rhythm with each breath you take. Good. Slowly lower the arms down and step your back foot forward. Shake out the legs. Pause for a moment and observe the difference between your right side and your left side. Very good. Now we'll change legs. Left leg remains forward. Right leg steps back. Start with a conservative stance, not too long of a stance. Then reach your arms up and just notice how you feel in the pose. Remember, we have to hold it for 10 breaths. It's going to be a while. But if you're really comfortable, walk that front foot forward more, bend the front knee and reach up. If you're feeling any lower back pressure, just gently squeeze the buttocks. Tuck your tailbone slightly. Don't overdo it. And reach up. So eventually, we want that front thigh to come parallel to the ground. But today may not be that day. And again, connect with the quality of a warrior. How should the legs be? Strong, steady, stable, grounded. And then focus on the upper body, from the hips to the fingertips. Can you find more length? Can you find more ease? It's absolutely fine if you come out of the pose. Just take a breath or two and see if you can go back in. We have two more breaths here. Staying with it, building that quality of resilience. And one. Slowly lower the arms down and step the back foot forward. Coming into Samastitihe. Equal standing pose. Feet are apart, arms by your side. One more full breath here. And open the eyes. Separate the legs out. This is a wide stance compared to the previous one. We want a really long stance for this. Legs length at least. Okay. From here, you're going to turn your right foot out. And front heel is in line with the arch of the back foot. And then bend your front knee. And take a look at your knee. Your knee is pointing in the same direction as the toes. So if you can see your entire foot, that means your knee is pointing out too much. Or if you can see all the toes, but they're on the outside edge of your knee, again, you're pointing the knee inward. So we want the knee to point in the same line as the middle toes. From here, raise your arms up to shoulder height. Good. Again, the same option is there. To go a little bit deeper, you widen the stance and lower the hips. Nice. Now, root your feet down as if you're going to rip the mat apart with your feet. And shift your eye gaze to be over the front fingers. Turn your neck towards the right. Fingers are reaching out. Fingertip to fingertip, find length in the arms. Keep rooting the feet. Three more. If you need to release, come out and go back in. Two. And one. Slowly release the arms. Straighten that front leg. Now point the right toes in and turn your left foot out. Heel to arch alignment. If you're feeling like you need a break, please step your legs together, walk a little bit and come back. Okay. Now bend the left knee. Again, check in with the position of the knee like we did last time and raise the arms up to shoulder height. See if you can turn your head completely. Turn towards the left. Try the chin in line with the shoulder. And rooting the feet down. Feel those hips rotating outward. Press into the outer edge of your back foot. And reach out from fingertip to fingertip. Really nice, strong warriors. Lata, only one comment for you. Your shoulders are kind of turning halfway. See if you can get your chest parallel to the side wall. Yes, good. 
lift my back arm up another inch or so. Very good. Three. Remember, Virabhadra is named after an aspect of Shiva. He drops a lock of hair and it converts into Virabhadra. Last one. Slowly inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, drop the arms and adjust your legs. Coming back to Samastiti hip. You can keep your feet together or hip width apart like me. Close the eyes and observe your body. How did the warrior pose, Virabhadrasana pose feel for you? Were you able to tune in to that aspect of strength, of stability? And in the upper body, as you reached out, some freedom, some ease. And slowly open the eyes. So I'm going to just show you the pose from uh, lying down and then I want to do it in standing, okay? So this is Sarpasana. We normally do Sarpasana with the belly down. We interlock the fingers and we push the feet back, a uh, fist back towards the feet, lifting the chest off of the floor. Now the same pose, we're going to do it in standing to open up our shoulders, especially if you have posture if issues, if there is a lot of rounding in the upper back, this pose really helps. So you're going to interlock your fingers behind you. Start with elbows bent. Then draw your elbows towards each other. They're still bent at this point, And your fist is against the sacrum. From here, you're going to try and straighten the elbows. And now, remember to squeeze your buttocks slightly so that the lower back pressure doesn't increase. Then slowly lean back a little bit. And then you'll come up. Okay, let's try it out together. Interlock your fingers. Keep the fist against your sacrum between the buttocks. Okay, draw your elbows towards each other. And then try to straighten your arms as much as possible. At this point, your fist is off of the buttocks. Then you're going to reach your fist towards the floor. Squeeze the buttocks. Lean back. It's just like Sarpasana, but you're in standing. Very good. Inhale, come up. Keep the arms there. Pause for a moment. Take a breath in and out. Come back up, Lata. Good. Second round. Push the fist down. Lean back. Three, two, don't overdo. Last one. And inhale, come up. Unwind the arms. Relax. And just roll your shoulders forward and back. Notice if there's any difference in how your upper back feels. Very good. As a counter pose, we are going to do a flat back position, Ardha Uttanasana. For this one, I want you to start from your hips. Soften the knees a little bit. Stick your butt out. Okay? Keep the back flat and put your hands on your shins. Just below the knees is fine. Good. Everyone's here. Now try to straighten your legs. Uh, Lata, just take a look. What you're doing is this. I want you to lead with your chest. Stick your butt out, lead with your chest, keep that back straight. Yes, very good. Now try to straighten the knees fully if you can and pull up your kneecaps, tighten your thighs. Uh, Priya, soften your knees and come down a little bit further. Bend your knees a bit and come down a little bit more. Bend your knees. Yeah, good. Three. Two. There was any compression with the previous posture. We are going to release it with this one by flattening out the back. One. Now soften the knees a bit and slowly roll the spine up. Roll up all the way to standing. Nice. Now come close to a wall. Just take a look at the pose. We are going to do a a uh, preparatory version of the pose, not the full pose, okay? So you're going to put your hand on a wall. It can be next to you or in front of you. It really doesn't matter. You're going to bend your knee and the same side hand is going to hold your ankle, okay? This is Natarajasana and you're going to move your heel away from the butt. This is the preparation. That's it. I don't want you to go any further. If you've been practicing for a long time, if you want to lift that leg up more, feel free. But I'm going to teach only the prep version. Okay, let's all start. You can put your right hand against the wall or against a table. Whatever is in your room. 
bend your left knee and grab a hold of your ankle. Good. Now, your job is to move your heel away from the buttock. Okay? Without leaning forward, move your heel away from the buttock. Once you've reached your limit, you can start leaning forward and lifting that leg up if you want. Okay, just focus on that sensation of a back bend in one half of the body. And in the other half of the body, there's a lot of strength and stability. You're using the wall for support and the floor for support. There is grace and curves on one side. And there are sharp angles and grounding on the other side. Observe that. Good. Slowly bring that heel in. Lower the leg down. And I want you to take a few steps. Walk it off. Walking is one of the most easy, comfortable ways to relax the back also. Okay, let's move to the other side. Come back to the wall. Place your left hand against the wall or the uh, chair, cabinet, whatever you have. Bend your right knee and hold your ankle. Move your heel away from the buttock. So it is a back bend. It is not so much about leaning forward. Okay, it is a back bend. Try to find that back bend. Heel away from the buttock. There should be a big gap, at least six inches. More is fine, but not required. Good. And some of you may be able to come off of the wall and lean forward. That is optional. Three. Finding that balance between grace and stability. Two. Very nice, everyone. Last one here. Good. Carefully bring the heel in. Lower the foot down. Relax. Again, take a few steps forward and back. Nice. We'll come down to the floor now. Bend your knees and slowly lower the hips down with or without the support of your hands. Come to the floor. Place your hands back behind you. Legs are apart. Prarambhik sthiti. Close the eyes and notice how your body feels. We are going to move on to some postures to relax the back, releasing all those muscles that have worked today. Another breath here. Taking stock, just like we did at the beginning of class. Now we've finished the yang part, the heating part of the class. We're moving on to the softer aspects, relaxation aspects. Slowly open the eyes and walk your hands in. You're going to bend your right knee and place the foot outside your left knee. Ardha Matsendrasana, simple version. Okay. Now hold your right leg with your left arm, the opposite arm. And check your left leg, pull the toes towards you, point them up towards the ceiling. Okay, once you have that, right hand goes just behind you. A lot of times people place the hand near the edge of the mat. So your turning will not be very effective. See if you can bring the hand in line with your sacrum, in line with your tailbone. And then turn the body, belly, chest and shoulders. For the most part, your twist should be coming from the upper part of your back. Your lower back is already very flexible because there is no rib cage to hold it in place. Right? We do a lot of free move movement with the lower back. Try to focus on your upper back. Same thing with the neck. Neck has a lot of range of movement. Focus on the chest more. This pose is named after a fish believe that a human was swallowed by the fish, Matsendranath. On your next inhale, slowly unwind the body, come back to center and stretch the right leg out. Bend your left knee this time and place the foot outside your right knee. Wrap your right arm around the knee and place your left hand behind you. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, turn your body towards the left. Matsyendranath was in the fish 
by the banks of a river and he overheard Par Parvati's and Shiva's conversation. Shiva was telling her all the secrets of yoga. So he learned all of that and practiced all of those teachings inside the fish and he found liberation. He is the person who founded Hatha Hat Yoga and Nath tradition. One more breath here. Unwind your body, come back to center and stretch your legs out. Relax your legs. We have one more seated posture and then we'll come down to the floor. Bend your right knee, sole of the foot against the left inner thigh. So after back bends, we do twisting and then we do forward bending to relax the muscles of the back. So normally Paschimottanasana and Janushishasana are supposed to be traditionally stretches for the back. But in modern day, we are doing a lot of back stretching. So we have changed it. We keep that spine long, slide the hands down the leg and we fold. Okay. So breathing in, lengthen your spine, breathing out, fold over the left leg. Lata, try to lift the chest up a little bit more. Otherwise, it looks good. Charu, that's good. Uh, pull your toes towards you, Priya. Yeah, those of you who can hold the foot, grab a hold of it. And then see, maybe you can bend your elbows and go closer to the leg. But it is not required. And if you feel lower back pulling sensation, please bend your knee. Soften the knee a bit. Okay, the stretch is primarily in the back of the straight leg, back of your left leg. Two more. Relax your jaw and your face. Good. Inhale and come all the way up. Exhale, release. Let's change. Right leg straight, left knee bends. Sole of the foot against the inner thigh. Toes pointing up. Breathing in. Lengthen your spine. And breathing out. Bend forward. Holding your shin, ankle or the foot. Now keep that spine long. But there's no need to look up. Don't uh, strain your neck. Spine is long. And as you exhale, you're going to bend forward. Till you feel that stretch in the back of your leg. And there's a gentle stretch all along the back of the torso also. But it just shouldn't be concentrated in the lower back. If all you're feeling is the lower back, that means you've gone too far. You need to lift up a bit or you need to bend the knee a little. Three more. Feel those calf muscles. Feel those hamstrings. Observe that stretchy quality of the muscle. In our back bending, we have done a lot of contraction of these very muscles. Good. On your next inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, release the arms, stretch your leg out, relax your legs. Again, in Prarambhik Sthiti, just notice how you feel after doing the stretches. Is there some release? Is there some different quality in the legs? You feel some freedom and ease? Good. Now lie down on your back. Slowly roll your spine down, taking the support of your arms. Bend your right knee, hug it in towards your chest and straighten your left leg out. Now, when I teach this pose, I like to bring the awareness to the front of the hip. For many people, when they hug the knee in, they feel the front of the hip is getting compressed or they feel like a bony contraction. So I want you to, if that is happening to you, if it's an unpleasant feeling, then just move your knee towards your armpit, okay? You're still compressing the right side of the belly. And it's optional for you to lift your head and neck up and bring the nose to the knee. Three more here. This is a pose which stimulates the digestive system. We have the liver on the right side, the ascending colon. All of those organs are getting a massage. Very good. Release. Lower the head and neck down. Stretch the right leg out. Good. Now the same thing on the left side. Hug the left knee in. 
assess do i need to change the angle move the knee towards the armpit perhaps and then you have to press against the belly the most important part is to affect the digestive system we want the uh, spleen the pancreas the descending colon all of these organs that are on the left side we want to stimulate and improve the circulation there head and neck up optional three more Two. Very nice. Last one. Carefully lower the head and neck down and stretch your leg out. Take a breath in and out. We are going to go for both legs together. That's the full Pavan Muktasana pose. Bend both your knees, hug them into the chest. And you can optionally rock a little right, left, forward, back. This helps to release any residual lower back tension. If there's a particular way you like to move, go ahead and do that. Some of you may want to separate your feet and hold your, or separate your knees and hold your feet and rock like a little baby, happy baby. That's also fine. If there's any movement that your body is craving, any stretch that your body is craving, it will let you know. See if you can sense that then go ahead and do it. You may want to do a small twist or something. So take care of that need from your physical body and then lie down in Shavasana. Stretching the legs out. Finishing any movement that you need before coming down to rest. Legs apart, arms by your side, palms facing upward, preferably. Adjust the position of your body to get comfortable. Take a few easy breaths and settle into the practice of stillness and going inward. Relax your jaw, relax the face. Good. We'll start with the body rotation of awareness practice. Without moving, we simply feel and relax each and every part of the body. When you're feeling, try your best not to move. But when you're relaxing and softening, there may, be, there may be a little bit of movement and that's okay. Become aware of both your feet, the toes, the soles of the feet, the tops of the feet. Both feet together. Ankles. Shins and calf muscles. Knees. Thighs. Back of the thighs. Hips. Front. And back. From your toes to your hips, both the legs are completely relaxed. Coming to the belly, notice if you're holding any tension in the belly. Soften it, let go. Chest. Mm. 
lower back, middle back, upper back. Come to the arms, shoulders, armpits, upper arms, elbows, forearms, and wrists. Hands, palms, back of the hands, and the fingers. Try to relax each finger consciously. Both arms from the fingertips to the shoulders, completely relaxed. Neck, scalp, and face. Especially the space between the eyebrows, the eyes sinking into their sockets, the jaw and the tongue. Feel the whole body all together. If your mind has drifted, bring it back and consciously relax the entire body all together as one unit. Now, Take your awareness back to a moment in time with a person that you really connect with, any, any woman in your life. It could be your mother, daughter, sister, friend, colleague, any woman in your life whom you have a special bond with, a connection with. Maybe you feel that nurturing quality, caring quality. Maybe you can tune into a very specific moment, something that they have done for you. There may be many. Try to pick out any one moment. It could be something very simple, a meal shared, a conversation. Try to remember where that moment ha occurred. Try to relive that moment in vivid detail. What was there in the room? Were you in an open space? What were the sounds? What does this person mean to you? Can you tune in to that feeling of gratitude of having this person in your life? Verbally, mentally, try to put that in a sentence. I am grateful for. What is it that this person brings to your life? 
mentally sending gratitude to this person. And notice how that makes you feel, that feeling of gratitude. And bring that feeling back with you as you feel the body resting against the floor and all the contact points between your body and the ground. Reconnect back with the space around you and the sounds around you. Notice the expression on your face after having brought back that memory and relived it and connecting with that feeling. Start deepening the breath. And as you add small movements to the fingers and toes, spread that feeling of gratitude into your whole body. You can raise your arms up overhead and give your whole body a big stretch. And then carefully roll to your right side, rest for a moment or two, or any side that is more comfortable. Pause. And when you feel ready, come up to a comfortable seated position. Spine upright, shoulders relaxed, eyes gently closed. We're going to do a few rounds of Nadi Shodhana to balance that Ida and Pingala Nadi that we talked about at the beginning of class. The Ida is the left nostril more feminine energy, and pingla, right nostril, more masculine energy. If you already know the practice, go ahead and start. Otherwise, you can follow along with me. You're going to bend your index finger and middle finger in, and you're going to use your thumb against your right nostril, breathing in through the left, two, three, four. Lock your right nostril, breathe... Uh, Lock your left nostril, breathe out through the right. Two, three, four. Breathing in right. Two, three, four. Lock the right, breathe out left. Two, three, four. In left. Two, three, four. Out right. Two, three, four. In right. Two, three, four. Out left. Two, three, four. In left. Two, three, four. Out right. Two, three, four. In right. Two, three, four. Out left. Two, three, Four. One last round in left, two, three, four. Out right, two, three, four. In right, two, three, four. Out left, two, three, four. Release your hand down. Take a couple of easy breaths in and out through the nose. Notice how you feel after today's practice. We'll feel the class by chanting Om together once. Join your palms and take a deep breath in. Om.
Rub your palms together briskly. Face that warmth against your eyelids and your face. Bowing down to Mother Earth in gratitude. With a few blinks, slowly open the eyes with a smile. Have a wonderful evening ahead. If you have any questions about the class, uh, you can ask me now. Hi, Usha. Nice to see you after such a long time. <laughs> Glad you nice were able to, to see join. You too. I, I <laughs> saw your post and I was like, okay, let me just attend. I was... <laughs> Very nice. So so nice of you. Uh, Lata, feeling fine? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was very nice. Very nice. Thank I enjoyed you. the Thank you. <laughs> Priya, doing okay? Knee was come to leg okay. Yeah, all right. Good. Great. All right. See you all again sometime soon, I hope. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank Namaste. You. Bye.